Another challenge that faces suppliers are directed suppliers. The concept of an OEM um, being told um, or directing that certain <coughs> business be uh, sent to certain suppliers. Certain legal developments, for example, in China with the, the uh, passing of the labor laws, um, the, new, the new labor statute that, that took effect January 1st of this year, the antitrust statute, the tax statute, and perhaps many other statutes may have an impact on the 24,000 uh, Korean suppliers that have established a presence in China. <clears throat> As I mentioned, Korea's auto industry has had a, just a remarkable history. And from a development stage, very briefly, it began back in 1960 essentially as contract manufacturers building to spec for foreign vehicle manufacturers. It has r risen rather meteorically to where it is today. From a, develop from a uh, production standpoint, actual production began in earnest in the early 1980s, which when you think about it is less than 30 years ago from today. And in 30 years, the, the, the production has now exceeded 4 million units per year. There's been a change in the mix between domestic and export, uh, largely uh, triggering substantially in the, in the um, around 2000 when the financial crisis hit. But the Korean auto industry, r compared to comparable industries, the other top 10, for example, has risen extremely quickly. And that's quite remarkable. As of 2006, Korea was the fifth largest vehicle uh, producing country in the world, which again, in less than 30 years, is quite remarkable. Now currently, let's talk about the, the sales of imported vehicles in Korea. And I, I, it's not as clear as it should be, but there's a line that, that um, I hope everybody can see. Yeah, okay. There's basically three things I want to point out about this slide. First of all, from an import standpoint, uh, U.S. made vehicles from 1990 through 2007 have essentially remained relatively flat. Um, in 2007, for example, the, the, the sale of U.S. vehicles was roughly 5,000. During the same period of time, from 90 to 90, basically 90 to 2,000, other imports um, were increasing, but not all that substantially. As of 2001, there has been an increase so that the total vehicle um, sales, imported vehicle sales in Korea at the moment, is around 53,000 and some change. The total uh, market share percentage of all imported vehicles in Korea for 2007 was about 4.4%. The top selling imported vehicles in Korea last year were um, essentially Hondas, Toyotas, BMWs, and high-end, um, what I'd refer to as status vehicles. The, the auto parts industry in Korea, uh, in regard to the number of suppliers and the size of suppliers for the past four years, has remained relatively constant. In terms of vehicle trade parts with Korea, um, there are a couple things. First of all, exports from the United States into Korea, have, which is the blue line, have remained relatively constant. Um, on the other hand, import or, uh, exports from Korea to the United States began to increase in 1998 and then spiked quite considerably in the 2004 area and has continued ever since clearly as a result of the HMMA plant that was built in Montgomery. In terms of U.S. sales of Korean light vehicles, uh, obviously Korea has enjoyed um, a significant um, uh, number of sales and success in the U.S. market. Beginning in 2000, where uh, roughly 500,000 vehicles were sold, it's now up over 800,000. But what's, what's interesting is referring back to the HMMA plant again, in 2004, the mix began to change. And even though the total number continues to increase, the number of imports to the United States is decreasing pretty much, and not surprisingly, uh, proportional to the number of um, localized or domestic uh, you know, manufacturers that go on in Montgomery. And as soon as the Kia plant is completed, 
in Georgia, and I believe 2009, I would expect that, that uh, graph to change even more. In regard to the exchange rate, when uh, Hyundai Motors chose to build a manufacturing plant in um, Montgomery, the exchange rate was roughly 1,200 won to the U.S. dollar. Presumably, Hyundai decided that that was a good business decision to build a plant in Alabama when the exchange rate was at 1,200. As we all know, the exchange rate is considered, the, the one is considerably stronger now, um, roughly 940 um, to the U.S. dollar. And so if that decision was good at 1,200, then the decision looks even better today. In terms of challenges ahead, <clears throat> the Korean auto industry um, faces challenges that are unique to it and also common to the globalized industry. First, it has to develop high-end value-added products simply to differentiate it from the hyper-fierce competition for um, sales in most markets. Research and development, of course, is the key to that, particularly in regard to alternative energy vehicles, different drivetrains, and eco-cars. Uh, enhancing the capabilities of their small and mid-size um, supplier industry is also going to be a critical challenge going forward. Uh, rehabilitating the domestic demand and, of course, keeping labor relations peaceful will be very, very important. So let's look at the future and what does all this mean? Well, when I was asked to, to do this, I, it, it reminded me of the well-recognized, the comment from the well-recognized auto industry expert Wayne Gretzky, who once said, skate to where the puck is going, not to where it is. And <clears throat> from that standpoint, um, that's exactly what uh, the Korean auto industry has done. Let me give you three examples. First of all, the globalization of the Korean auto industry. Each Korean vehicle manufacturer has entered into alliances, strategic alliances, that is going to allow each of them to play much larger in a globalized industry. Of course, Hyundai and Kia have, have joined forces, and collectively they are now almost 100,000 employees, and they ha certainly have the critical mass and capabilities of competing anywhere with anybody. But in addition, Renault, Samsung, uh, or Samsung has, has uh, allied with Renault, GM, of course, has a joint venture with Daewoo. Uh, SAIC has, has purchased Sangyong, and Tata has purchased Daewoo Commercial. In addition to these strategic alli alliances, um, the, the, the supplier industry has also taken steps to ally strategically. In fact, 257 of Korea's uh, suppliers are in some type of collaborative <coughs> relationship now with foreign uh, companies. The second step to better position itself for the opportunities that lie ahead is transplants and capacity. Um, Bernard referred to this as localization, and I'll refer to that uh, later on in this presentation that as well. But if you look, Korea's um, auto industry, the manufacturers, have established manufacturing capabilities in markets where they project sales. And this is going to have a dramatic impact, um, you know, on their ability to compete um, globally. A third uh, step that, that needs to be taken into consideration, in, into consideration is the fact that the Chorus FTA is really only one of many FTA negotiations that Korea is engaged in currently. The dates that I have compiled may not be absolutely accurate, but the purpose of the slide is to just give you an indication of how much activity is going from a trade standpoint in Korea. Of particular note, the two footnotes down below uh, uh, reflect that even though, to my knowledge, there aren't any ongoing negotiations going, Korea also anticipates, or it's possible, that Korea may ent enter into negotiations, trade negotiations with China and also with Japan. Um, President Lee um, Myung-bak, 
who was inaugurated three days ago, um, very pro-business, very proactive, has already indicated, to my knowledge, that uh, he anticipates a renewal of the Korean-Japanese summit, summit talks that uh, were broken off back in 2004.